Ever wondered why your teeth don't shatter under mastication forces, although your enamel, the outermost layer, is brittle? The answer lies underneath the enamel, where we have the dentin that forms the bulk of the tooth. Dentin forms a flexible layer under the enamel, allowing it to withstand those forces. This is not the only amazing quality dentin has. It is stronger than the bone. It has a high compressive strength of 297 megapascals. It has both a higher tensile and fluctural strength compared to the enamel. It has low thermal conductivity and expansion. And finally, it's highly permeable, which means any therapeutic substances applied to the exposed dentin are more likely to diffuse to the pulp. And second, topical agents have more potential to remineralize the dentin. So what makes dentin so strong yet flexible? The majority of the dentin, around 70%, is made up of hydroxyapatite crystals that are smaller than those found in the enamel and give strength to the dentin. The rest of the dentin is made up of 10% water and 20% organic material. The organic material is mostly made up of collagen fibers, which provide elasticity. The majority of these collagen fibers are type 1, but types 3 and 5 are also present. Now that we've revised the basics about dentin, let's move on to the types of dentin. Dentin is classified according to the dentinal tubules, the time of formation, and response to injury. Dentinal tubules are normally found in all types of dentin. They divide dentin into peritubular and intertubular portions. The difference between them is that peritubular dentin is hypermineralized, meaning it contains less collagen fibers, while intertubular dentin is composed mainly of type 1 collagen fibers that allow it to act as a scaffold for the crystal deposition in dentin. Another difference is the time of formation. Intertubular dentin is formed first. In fact, it is the first type of dentin secreted by odontoblast cells and makes up the bulk of the dentin. Following the intertubular dentin's deposition, peritubular dentin is formed and transported by odontoblastic processes from cell bodies. Lastly, their location differs as well. While intertubular dentin is found, as the name suggests, between the dentinal tubules, peritubular dentin is mostly found closest to the dentino enamel junction, lining the dentinal tubules. The second classification of dentin follows its time of formation and consists of primary and secondary dentin. Before enamel begins to form, primary dentin is secreted by odontoblasts until the completion of root formation. Not only is primary dentin the first to form, but it also makes up the bulk of our dentin. As for its location, primary dentin can be found either outlining the pulp, named circumpulpal dentin, which makes up the majority of the dentin, or at the outermost layer of dentin, named nantal dentin. The difference between circumpulpal and mantle dentin is not only in their location, but also in the orientation of their collagen fibers. While circumpulpal collagen fibers are parallel to the dentino enamel junction, the collagen fibers in mantle dentin are oriented perpendicular to the dentino enamel junction. After root formation is complete, the formation of secondary dentin will begin. The secondary dentin is found below the primary dentin surrounding the pulp chamber. As you get older and odontoblasts continue secreting secondary dentin, your pulp chamber will decrease in size. This is known as pulp recession. The fiber orientation of secondary dentin is continuous with that of primary dentin. You can recognize the difference between the primary and secondary dentin through the differences in their staining. Now in case of injury, dentin has a protective mechanism to prevent damage of the pulp. 
This creates two specific types of dentin, tertiary and sclerotic. The type of tertiary dentin secreted depends on the severity of the injury. When the injury is minimal, pre-existing odontoblasts will secrete reactive tertiary dentin, while if the injury is substantial, newly differentiated odontoblast-like cells secrete reparative tertiary dentin. Unlike primary and secondary dentin, tertiary dentin has no specific time for its formation. It's a protective mechanism by the odontoblasts as a response to injury. This injury could be in the form of attrition, abrasion, caries, or a cavity preparation. Its formation depends on the severity of the injury. The more severe the injury, the faster the rate of formation. Moreover, instead of having a specific location, its location depends on the site of injury. However, it is usually expected to be found near the pulp. What if the damage is so strong and chronic that the odontoblastic processes retract or even die? This will leave empty dentinal tubules, known as dead tracts, which appear as dark areas in the ground section of the tooth. With time, these tracts can become completely filled with minerals, causing them to appear white in ground sections. The dentin in those tracts is called sclerotic dentin and appears translucent due to the calcification of the dentinal tubules. This is not all bad as sclerotic dentin seals off the dentinal tubules and prevents bacteria from entering the pulp cavity. Sclerotic dentin is not only seen as a result of chronic injury by caries or abrasion, but may also be a manifestation of the normal aging process. Just like tertiary dentin, sclerotic dentin is expected to be found either near the pulp or at the specific site of injury. As different as all the types of dentin may be, they share the same goal, to maintain the integrity of our teeth and withstand all the forces without allowing the sensitive pulp to get damaged.